so many different parts of a computer need to be able to communicate with each other. Of course, we've got inputs to our computer, and they could be things like keystrokes on the keyboard or mouse clicks, or it could be data via uh, our, uh, our camera or uh, maybe a CD or, or whatever. So these are inputs that come into the computer. They get processed here in what we call our central processing unit. Now, of course, the CPU is that area of the computer, the brain of the computer, that does a fetch, decode, and execute. So it takes programs from memory. It decodes them, it reads them, and it executes and follows the program steps to execute. And of course, out of that might be some outputs. And so where are these memories stored when they're being used? They're being stored in memory. So our RAM or our cache, for example. So we need to, the computer needs to have a language in which it can communicate with all of these different parts. And the language that a computer uses is called binary. So binary simply means, well, by means two. So binary language is a language of only simply two characters or two digits. We have a zero and we have a one. They're the only two digits. So all of our binary language that the computer uses to communicate is all a series of zeros or ones. The smallest unit we have is called a bit, a binary digit. And that is just either a one of those or a one of those, a binary digit. So when uh, a computer is uh, executing a program, that program is stored in memory in either zeros or ones, a whole billions of zeros and ones. And they are in what are called transistors. So, well, let's just go back and have a think about memory and storage again. So we've got memory, which is our working memory or our short-term memory, and we call this volatile memory. In other words, it only exists when the computer is running. When you turn the computer off, it goes. So that's what the memory is in the RAM. It remembers the programs that are being executed at that time. And the way that it remembers these bits of data is through things called transistors. And a transistor is a switch, an electric switch, that when an electric signal is passed through it, it's either on or it's off. It's only got two states on or off. When it's on on, that is a one. And when it's off, it's a zero. So our CPU and our RAM have whole have, have millions of transistors that are either on or off. And that is how the memory uh, of a program is stored whilst it's being executed. We also have, of course, our storage. And our storage is our long-term memory. It's called non-volatile memory because it stores, it continues to be stored once the computer is turned off. So this is on our hard drive. So it might be a, um, an optical drive or it might be a, um, a solid state drive. So this is a hard drive and it actually stores the data again in bits of either uh, ones or zeros. But say for example with the optical disc, they're stored by uh, the orientation, the magnetic direction of orientation. Uh, but it's the same thing, it's still stored as, as ones and zeros. So whilst of course our, uh, uh, so whilst of course our programs, when a programmer writes a program for the computer, it's in a different type of code, uh, a coding language, maybe it's JavaScript, maybe it's HTML, uh, but then it then needs to be coded by the computer as a series of zeros and ones. So it's the binary language that the computer understands. And that's how it's stored. 
uh, and that's how it's, it's, I guess it's also stored in memory as well when the computer's operating and the computer's actually using the programs. What I want to do is just talk to you about how, uh, we we'll use numbers as an example of how um, binary can be used to express numbers. So if we think about our decimal system, deci means 10 because we've actually got 10 different digits, haven't we? We've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so there's 10 different digits. Whereas with binary, we have two, that's it, zero and one. Okay, so how on earth can we express numbers using binary? Let's have a look at a decimal number. So this is in decimal. Let's see the number 3572. All right, now as you know, the two is in what we call the ones column, the seven is in the tens column, the five is in the hundreds column, and the three is in the thousands column. So we can easily read that 3,572. All right, so how do we express a number in binary? Let's start by doing some easy numbers, but first of all, I'm gonna show you how we would, um, uh, how the places work. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a, a random number first of all. Okay, so we have this binary um, number. Okay, so in this place here, it's still the ones. Here is twos. Here is four. This is the eights. This is the sixteens. And this is the 32s. Okay, so what does that mean? So this one is, is on, so it's one, one. Now we've got zero in our twos column, so it's zero times two. We've got one in our four column. We've got one in our eight column. We've got zero in our 16 column. And we've got one in our 32 column. Okay, so that means we've got 32, forget about the zero times 16, plus eight, plus four, forget about the zero times two, and we've got one times one. So let's add that up. 32 plus eight is 40, 44, 45. So that means that this binary number here means 45. Let's just do one more. Okay, so we might try and do it a little bit quicker this time. So we've got zero ones. We have got one in our twos column, so we've got two here. We've got one in our four column, so we'll put a four here. We haven't got, uh, we've got a zero in our eights column, so we won't count that one. And we've got a one in our sixteen and we've got a one in our 32. So we're gonna 32 plus 16 plus four plus two. So 16 plus four is 20, plus two is 22. And then if we add 32 to it, we're gonna have 54. Is that what you got? Hopefully you did. So that binary number represents 54. And for larger and larger numbers, well, we just have larger, uh, more numbers here. So then we'd have a 64 column, et cetera, et cetera. We can also use binary to express the alphabet uh, and also other characters that we use in computing as well. So this is what A is, our oh, capital A, and this is capital B. So there's a whole dictionary of what the binary is for for each of the letters and all of the numbers, etc. But it is interesting to understand what it actually means. So the take home message is that we write a computer program for the computer in uh, a code that the humans understand, like JavaScript, etc. But then that gets decoded by a computer and stored in binary digits or bits, either zeros or ones. And that is how the commu computer communicates to execute commands and execute programs.